Sometimes we'll get to a place where it will look like God is not present. Where it will look like God is not working with you. But you must understand if your heart is given to God, you will see his ways in what he's doing around you. Proverbs 23, it says, My son, if thine heart be wise, my heart shall rejoice. Even mine heart. And it says, verse 16, Yea, my reins shall rejoice when thy lips speak right things. Let not thine heart envy sinners, but be thou in the fear of the Lord all day long. For surely there is an end, and thine expectation shall not be cut off. Tell your neighbor, for surely there is an end. I've been meditating in these verses, you know, and I've drawn a lot in understanding in the presence of God. One thing you need to understand, sometimes in the presence of God, or when we are serving God, especially the believers in Christianity, there's a, there's a moment where you get and you start to feel like God is not present with you. And I don't know if you ever felt like that. And if you haven't, there is someone who has felt like that. And there is someone who's feeling like that tonight. But it's important to understand why those feelings come and what they mean and how to interpret them and what you can do with those thoughts. Am I communicating? Because of certainty, you will come to a place in your life where it may appear as though God is not with you or as though God has abandoned you. When you want to do something and it does not go your way, you feel like you have let yourself down. But most of the time, you have not let God down. But you have let your own self down. And sometimes the people around you. Every kind of person. If something doesn't go their way. The first thing they ask themselves is what have I done wrong? Every kind of person. A spiritual man can't think like that. A spiritual man can't think like that. Because if you're doing something and it doesn't go your way. It does not mean that you have failed something. It doesn't necessarily mean there's a place where you have failed. Sometimes it can be the doing of God. And most of the time it's the doing of the Lord. Because it is necessary that as God raises you in understanding him, that he takes you through things that will build you unto a perfect man. How many understand? The Bible says in the book of Hebrews chapter 2, he says, and in bringing many sons into glory, it was necessary for him to have the author of their salvation become perfect through death, that he may rescue those who the whole time were slaves into fear by reason of death. So that death got people and enslaved them. That they could not be free. So when he was bringing the Savior, it was necessary to him to have the Savior perfected through sufferings. So if our Savior was perfected through sufferings, how much more you? If your heart is not with God, it's possible that other things will influence it. It's possible that other things will influence it. Always ask yourself, where is your heart? In what you are doing, where is your heart? If your heart is not with God, trust me, something is yearning for your heart in that very moment. Right now, if your heart is not in God, some spirit somewhere is, is, is wrestling with God about your heart. If your heart is not in God. But when your heart is in God, then the Bible says something next there. It says, then your eyes will be able to observe the ways of God. So your eyes cannot observe the ways of God if your heart is not with him. As a man thinks in his heart, so is that man. Meaning, you cannot change a person, you cannot differentiate a person from the thoughts of his own heart. From the beliefs of his own heart. So if I want to change someone, I want to consider their heart. And there is a way you can know somebody's heart. Easy for us to know people who know God when they are very sick, when they are very broke, or when they are very rich. It's easy to know them. Because then their, their character is amplified. You know, God, God is so funny. When he loves you, he will send you out to do something. And when he sends you out to do something, he will give you success by his own self. Because you cannot do it in your own strength. He's the one who gives you success. After he has given you success, then he rewards you 
for doing what he told you to do that you didn't know and for causing you to succeed at something you could not succeed in so that he can reward you. Now when you don't know it, you say, oh God is causing us to suffer. Why is God causing me to suffer like this? Because you don't understand that he has called you to participate in something he has already set out such that he can bless you because he already intended to bless you from the foundation of this world. Of this world. Now that's why when we discover that, when we understand that, that about God, we start to desire to have attention, to have God's attention because he's the one who has sent us here. Like most of you, God is dealing with your heart in some things where he's saying, my son, give me your heart. There are things pertaining to your heart that God is reaching out for. But you know what you are doing? The moment he reaches out for it, you tuck it in. You say, Lord, not today. And some of you, yes, you know what God is doing. Yes, you can see what God is doing. But you will not allow him to do that work in you. And Elihu, the son of Barakel, the Buzite, or the Bazite, answered and said, I am young, and ye are very old. He was speaking to Job. I am young, and ye are very old. Wherefore, I was afraid, and does not show you mine opinion. He says, I was afraid, so I could not tell you my opinion. I'm explaining to you how to draw God's attention to your life. If you are in need of help, how to draw God's attention into your own life by putting your heart in the right place. Elihu was among the three friends of Job who came to see him when trouble befell him. And the Bible says all the rest spoke and Elihu did not speak because he was the youngest. But the Bible says when he came to speak, he said, I was going to give my opinion. But I realized that you are very old and I'm young. So I couldn't freely give you my opinion. Look at verse 7. <laughs> Let me show you something here. I said, days should speak. And a multitude of years should teach wisdom. He thought that by, the, by, by reason of experience, by reason of the multitude of days, Job could have wisdom. Or the ones who spoke should have wisdom. But he discovered something, something as he was talking. Go to God verse 8. He says, but there is a spirit in a man. The inspiration of the almighty that giveth them understanding. He discovered it is the spirit of God in men that gives them the understanding of the things of life. In their hearts. Not by experience of life. Not by experience of length of days. Go to verse 9. He says, great men are not always wise. Neither do the aged understand judgment. This is what Elihu saw. He saw that it does not mean necessarily that because you are great, that you are wise. That because you are old, then you have wisdom and judgment. He says sometimes it's about the spirit of God which is in you that is able to give you understanding. Do you know that there are many people who have discovered the will of God for their life by simply tuning in in their heart to hear God. But you cannot know there is an end to things if that vital force is not in you. That vital force is what causes you to be in a place that does not seem like what God has said, but you are seeing the will of God.